Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to the session on Spring MVC tutorial. In this session, I will talk about how Spring Framework integrates with Model View and Controller. So without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, I will tell you what is Spring MVC. And after that, I will talk about the Spring Model View Controller Framework and the workflow of the framework. Followed by that, I will talk about how to create a Spring MVC project and how to include all the dependencies and how exactly it works with the help of an example. And finally, I will wrap up the session by telling you some of the advantages of Spring MVC framework. Now, without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, let's see what is Spring MVC. So Spring MVC is a Java framework which is used to build web applications. It follows the model view controller design pattern. Not just that, it also implements all the basic features of a core Spring framework like inversion of control, dependency injection, etc. So now let me tell you one thing. If you are not thorough with what a Spring framework, and if you are not aware with the core spring fundamentals like inversion of control dependency injection everything I request you to pause this video go back to our YouTube playlist and search for spring framework tutorial learn the spring concepts first and you can also read a blog and execute couple of examples on spring then you will understand how to configure spring framework and then you can come back and check how the model view controller and spring framework is integrated together and how this works perfectly fine. Okay, so now let's see what spring MVC provides us. It also provides a dignified solution to use MVC in the spring framework with the help of a dispatcher servlet. So what is dispatcher servlet? So dispatcher servlet is a class that receives the incoming request and maps it to the right resource such as controller model and view. So as you all might be aware that every web application integrates with spring framework because it does not require web server activation and with spring MVC this web server activation support is built in and you are not bound to any container life cycle that you need to manipulate. So that's why everyone uses spring MVC and that's why every one of them uses spring MVC web application on a spring tool suit. Now with this, let's move further and see the model view and controller framework of Spring. So this is a model view and controller Spring framework and it comprises of a web browser, a front controller, a model and a view. So now let me explain you all these components in detail. So a model contains the core data of the application. Data can either be a single object or a group of objects. And you have a controller. It contains the business logic of an application. You can use at controller annotation to mark this class as a controller. So if you have a computer system and if you want to name which part of your computer is a controller, then I can say CPU as a controller. So basically all the work that is done by CPU in a computer is done by a controller in the spring MVC framework. So I hope you understood what exactly it is. And you have a view. This is used to represent the information in a particular format, like in your Excel format. And you can also use JSP, that is your Java server pages, to create a view page. If I have to again compare a computer system and your Spring MVC, so I can say easily that the monitor or the display that you get is a view, right? And you have a front controller. In this, the dispatcher servlet class works as a front controller. So now let's see how internally Spring integrates with the model view and controller approach. So you can see first when a request is sent to the dispatcher servlet, the request is also sent from dispatcher servlet to handler mapping, to controller, to view resolver, and to view. So when a request is sent to a dispatcher servlet, the request is sent to handler mapping and a controller. So when it comes to controller, the controller functions internally and sends the response that will be a model and a view back to dispatcher servlet. And then this dispatcher servlet sends the view to a view resolver. And when it gets resolved in the view resolver functionality, then it will be presented as a view. 
So after all these functionalities, then you will get the output, right? So basically the incoming requests are obstructed by the dispatcher servlet that works as a front controller and the dispatcher servlet gets an entry of handler mapping from the XML file and forwards the request to the controller and after that the controller returns an object of model and view and finally the dispatcher servlet checks the entry of the view resolver in the XML file and then invokes the specified view component. So that's exactly how it works. Okay. Now let's move further and see a small example of Spring MVC. So there are various steps that you have to understand. First, you need to create a new Maven project and add all the dependencies. Then you have to create a controller class and configure the web XML file. And after that, you have to define the bean in the XML file. And then you need to create a JSP page and execute the program, right? So now let's see how it works. So as I've already told you first you need to create a Maven project in Eclipse. So just go to file click on new choose Maven project. Just click on next and in this case you have to use Maven archetype web app because you are creating a web application and not a simple project. So that is the reason you have to use Maven archetype web app. Then you have to click on next. Then you have to provide your artifact ID, your group ID, and everything. When you present your artifact ID as, you know, Spring, this turns out to be your package name. So you have to click on Finish. If you wish to know how to create a Maven project, and you know, if you want to know how to configure your Spring framework, you can check out the video on our YouTube playlist on Spring Framework and you'll understand all the fundamentals. As I have already created a project called Spring MVC. You can see here it's a Maven project. It comprises of a deployment descriptor, which is a RJ type created web application. You have the Java resources as well, and you have Java libraries. And I also suggest you to configure your Apache Tomcat server because I have to run a project on a server, and that's the reason it is very essential. Again, if you wish to know about this, you can check out the video on servlet and JSP tutorial. And you will understand even this as well. And I have the Maven dependencies, which is very important. And this is the source file inside. I have my main. Inside that, I have two folders that is a resource and a web app. So inside the resource, I have com, edureka, and a controller that is edition.java. And again, I have a web app, and that I have webinf. The one is the bean configuration file and the other one is my web.xml file for navigating through the web page and then I have a target. Again, this comprise of web resource and I have my Maven manifest. So you can see here. This is the structure that it should maintain and first thing is I have to configure my pom.xml file. So you can see here. This is the pom.xml file. That is a page object model XML file and it comprises of all the dependencies. So the dependencies that is required is the Spring Framework Web MVC. You need the MySQL connector jar, you need Java X servlet, and you need Spring Context, and that's all. So you simply have to navigate through, you know, MVN repository, and you have to just copy the Maven code that is the dependency code for example say I want spring MVC. I'll search for this. So this is what I require. I'll click on this and I'll get the latest release. So you can see there are various options. So you have a jar. So you have a maven dependency code. You have gradle. You have SBT grape build R many thing. But as I'm using maven, I just have to you know select this copy and paste it in my perm.xml file very simple that's what i did so these are the various jar files that i need so have a look at these jar files and also when i click on this project i'll choose build path and configure build path so you can see i have the maven dependency i have apache tomcat library and also i have the gre system Apply and close. So make sure your jar files, your dependencies, everything is configured before you jump into executing a project. Okay. So after this, the next step, what you have to do is you have to create a controller class. 
in order to create a controller class I'm using two annotations that is at controller and at annotation right so at controller marks this class as a controller and at request mapping is used to map the class with a specified URL so this URL that I'm using will refer to the view page that is index.jsp this is my JSP view page what I'm doing I'm just giving welcome to Eureka so this message should be executed on the browser using the server that is the Tomcat server right so now let's see how I have configured this controller so I'm importing the controller and the request mapping package inside that I've just created a method called public string display and written the index index refers to this so it will return this message on the web browser so it does not end here I also have to configure the bean class and the web.xml file so these are the configuration of all the bean class and defining the bean in an XML file is necessary to specify the view components in this the context component scan element defines the base package where dispatcher servlet will search the controller class so this defines the base package and the dispatcher servlet will handle the controller class and I have a web.xml file as well in this what I'm doing I'm specifying the servlet class which is the dispatcher servlet that acts as a front controller in the spring MVC and all the incoming requests for the HTML file will be forwarded to the dispatcher servlet so you can see I'm giving the display name that is a web app and the servlet name will be spring inside the servlet and the servlet class will be this because it's a dispatcher servlet that I have already told you and inside the servlet mapping I have to specify the servlet mappings as well so the URL pattern is this which is the same in my controller right the request mapping is used to match with the URL pattern so that's what I'm doing here and I'm also giving the servlet name so now when I run this project as run as run on server let's see what happens it's asking for the server I'll choose server 9 and I'll click on the next this is my project and finish you can see that your server has started so you can see that it is loading all the definitions from servlet context and it's initializing as well it will take a while that's fine there's no problem in that so you can see here the servlet was up and running and it also navigated through the browser and it displayed the output that is welcome to Edureka message on the browser, right? So that's exactly how it works. And this is how you need to configure your controller class, your bean configuration file, and your view page that is a JSP page. So next, let's see one more example where I will tell you how to enter the username and then it will display the data as well in a particular format. I have already configured a project for that as well and as I have already told you you need all the dependencies so I have the Java resources you have your maven dependencies I have already configured the pom.xml file and everything so first let's see the controller class so as I have already told you at controller annotation is used to mark the class as a controller and the request mapping will refer to the URL pattern from the web.xml file and I'm using the method called request method dot get to get the values from the view page. Okay, and it's very simple. First, it will refer to the method and it will say the home page requested and it will print the locale and then it will get the date format. And this is the method how you need to configure the date format. And finally, it will display the time on the server. Whatever the time is, it will display the time on the server. And I have one more file here called username so this is used to return the username that you are going to enter on the browser so this is all about the controller first let's see how your web content file looks like so I have my view pages that is user.jsp and home.jsp so inside the home.jsp page in my h1 tag I have written hello please enter the username to login and after you enter the username 
it will go to user.jsp and it will print hi and followed by your username. So first you have to use a dollar and followed by the username which implies your username will be displayed. It will print the time on the server. So again, this is the format and here I'm using the form action because I want to input the text that is a username and submit the value. So for that reason, I'm using a form action. Once it logins, it will say hello followed by the username. So these requests will go to your controller class. So the controller first will return the username and then it will display the date based on this format and inside the URL pattern that is followed by this method. It will say username page has requested and once it gets the response it will return back the user simple. So this is how you need to configure your view and controller. So now your model will be the bean class. So you have to define your bean that is a dispatcher servlet and you have to define the base package that is com.edureka.spring which I have defined it before and also there is a bean property you have to define views and your controllers in this class. Once this is configured, you need to go back to your web.xml file and configure for launching the web page and navigating to the particular request website and then performing the actions on the web page. So again, this is a parameter name and this is a servlet mapping that I have defined and this is a URL pattern. So once when I execute the program, let's see how it works. Again, I'll choose the same server that is Tomcat 9.0 and I'll run the example. So as I told you it first says hello, please enter the username to log in and it will display the time on the server. So I'll enter the username as Edureka and hit the login button and it's telling hi followed by Edureka simple again. If I want to change the username and give something like this hit the enter button. It will again navigate to this and you can see here on the server info. First it is telling the home page was requested and then two times I have requested the user page because two different times I gave two different username. That's the reason. Now let's move further and see some of the advantages of Spring MVC. First it is lightweight as Spring is a lightweight framework. There will not be any performance issues in Spring based web application. Next high productive. Spring MVC can boost your development process and that's the reason it is highly productive. Now talking about the security, most of the online banking web applications are developed using Spring MVC because of its high security. And as you all know it is MVC supported and that's the reason it is a great way to develop modular web application and also it comprises of a separate class for specified roles like model command validator etc and that's why it plays a role of separation. So these are some of the advantages of spring framework and with this we come to an end of the session on spring MVC tutorial. If you have any queries you can comment in the comment section below and we will reply back to you at the earliest. So that was all about this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and have a nice day.